Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. <clears throat> Welcome to the live Shabbat class. <clears throat> this is your host, Jeremiah Israel, and welcome to another Sabbath day. Before I get started, those who are new and are return visitors, please hit the like and or the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you've already a subscriber. Hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed and the like button. Doesn't cost a thing, it's free 99. It helps to uh, get my message across the YouTube algorithm and that more and more people can visit and view my, view my channel. It doesn't cost you a thing to be a part of, a, if this is a teaching ministry, if you come in here to learn, then, you know, hit the like and subscribe button. I'm not going to teach you soft things that you want to hear. I'm going to teach you according to the word of the Most High God, according to the King James 1611 Bible. Now, for most of y'all who don't understand, the King James 1611 Bible is a translated set of scrolls, Hebrew, Hebrew uh, scrolls and Greek and Hebrew scrolls that was written by great men that, that created the Bible. All, all of those scrolls and the, those letters and things that were written by Hebrew and Greek scholars. They, it, it, is, it is a set of those records. <clears throat> so, if you are concerned about who wrote the Bible, the Bible was written thousands, those letters, and those scrolls were written thousands and thousands of years ago. It wasn't written in 1619. It was authorized and completed in 1619. So, it is a set of, of a scroll set of records that were written by Levite priests because they were the scribes at the time. And these were just a set of those records that were translated into, into the old English which we know now as the King James 1611 Bible. So I, I used that Bible because it was the last book Written by, written and authorized by my forefathers. I don't do the Seifer because that book was written by a white man. Never trust dying enemies, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. What, what, what I'm doing, trusting my enemies to give me knowledge. They wrote that book. I don't know what's in it. I don't don't care. You know, don't care. You know, if you want to prefer that, you prefer uh, prefer your slave master over your. Uh, over your original fathers, pre, uh, forefathers, that's where your mind's standing. You still prefer your master over your, over, you still prefer your slave master over your, over your, uh, your own people. You prefer their things over your, your father's things. Can't worship two masters. You either gonna hate the one and love the other one. Can't serve mammon in the most high all of those things are in the bible to give you some direction to go but you know what a lot of you people you read stuff but you you lack understanding because the fact is you go opposite direction it's, it's not a suggestion that the bible the bible is not a suggestion that you read stuff and then you practice other things and do stuff differently You know, the way you live, the, the, the books you read and the things that you do, you things you choose over your own people, you can't worship God and mammon. Anyway, this is, a, as I said, this is a teaching ministry according to the King James 1611 Bible. I teach the word in season and out of season. It's not, it's not going to be some soft messages that I want want you to hear and, and give you the prosperity and say God is going to bless your life and 
Oh, provided that you pay me tithes and all that other stuff, I'm not going to ask for your money in that manner. If you want to support my ministry, you can like and subscribe on, on my YouTube uh, on my YouTube channel, or you can go onto Amazon.com and purchase one of more of my books. They're available in ebook, audio book, paperback, and hard copy. This is the Study Guide for the Kingdom, Volume One, written by Jeremiah Israel. Jeremiah Israel, that's me, that's a picture of me. Jeremiah Israel. And if you want to make this book available at the at the library, you will need to the title of the book, study guide. You can go to Amazon.com first, put Jeremiah Israel in the search line. And from that search line, all the books written in Jeremiah Israel will come up. You click the link to this book. If you want this book available at the library, you click this book. And on that page, on that link, when you click it, this information will come be available. Study Guide for the Kingdom, Volume 1. The name of the author, Jeremiah Israel, and this ISBN number right here will be available when you click that link on Amazon.com. When you do the search of Jeremiah Israel and all the, all the links that of the books that I have written come up, and you want this book, you click the link for this one, and all that information is on that page. Middle section, you'll see it in, in uh, you just copy that information, go to your uh, local library website, and there's a section down there, you know, recommended uh, books. You could recommend this book be available at the library. And nine times out of 10, they would, they would uh, purchase the book. They would contact you and say the book is available at the library. You can come pick it up. They give you X amount of time to come pick it up before they put it on the shelf. Understanding the parables of Jesus Christ. I'm well aware that there were no letter J 400 years ago. But were you, are you aware that there were no cars, no motorcycles, no airplanes, no air conditioning, no TV, no cell phones? None of that 400 years ago? I don't hear none of y'all talking about it. I speak English, and the Bible says with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to his people. So I'm not speaking Hebrew anymore. I'm speaking English. If it's another tongue, another language. So I didn't I'm not the author I didn't start English, the English language. Our captors did. We're not speaking Hebrew. Matter of fact, we don't know, you know, the Hebrew that was being read, uh, being that we're being learned now was the white man gave you that language. But the most high God gave us the original Hebrew. Now the oppressor giving you the Hebrew language now. I'm not accepting that. So why should I go and, and try to learn another language when the Most High God said he's going to speak to us in the language we're speaking right now? For with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to his people. So I speak English. Jesus Christ is the... Uh, it was I-E-S-U-S, -S, the Latin, and the Greek is uh, I-E-S-O-U-S, or something like that. It's, 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 uh, it's the Yoshua, that's, that's what it was trying to say, Yoshua, I-E-S-U-S, -S, Yeshua. So, yes, Yeshua, Yeshua, that was the uh, name that they were trying to, trying to interpret with their, with their language. But the fact is, we know what it is. It's not, it's not nothing to be, uh, to be divisive, divisive about, because the kingdom is not going to be divisive at the door. There's going to be no divisiveness. It's going to be division, the wicked and the righteous. And there's going to be no other divisions. So all, all of y'all trying to create this other type of, these types of division with the name doctrine and, and you got to say his name and got to do all that. God, most like God didn't tell you to, to say his name. He didn't tell you to keep his law, statutes, and commandments. 
It shall come to pass if thou should not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, not to say his name, and his statutes that I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. It ain't nothing to do with the name. We're being cursed because we're not doing his law, statutes, and commandments. That he commanded us way back then under, under uh, Mount Sinai. He's not telling you to say his name. Not one of those curses have anything to do with saying his name. That's one of the commandments. Thou shalt not say the Lord's name in vain. When you just walk around saying Yahushua, Yahushua, and all this other stuff, that's vain. You're saying his name in vain. Breaking the Most High God's commandment, trying to, just because you, you know, why the Bible got Lord and all this other stuff in it. Because the, because the people who wrote it understand, understood the law. Putting his name throughout the book is foolish because he told you not to say his name in vain. But you got some wise, foolish people today don't understand anything that simple. Excuse me, Lord, but that's, that's, that's the way it is. I understand why the Spirit tells me why. The Lord thy God, the, the Lord God, Lord, 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 God, God, God. Because the Lord thy God say don't say his name in vain. It's just a title, but he don't want you just banging his name all day. Giving him a headache. Anyway, let's get to our lesson. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is, can Israelite with heathen mothers enter the kingdom? <laughs> Unlike Israelite women, Having sex with heathen men, a child born from the seed of an Israelite man is an Israelite. But let us see what the law says. We got to evaluate the law because, you know, you got a lot of angry women out there that will say, you know, they can't. It isn't so. We're going to evade. We're going to look at the law because I, I want to look at it the, the right way. Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. I brought that up first because this is part of the law. So, in the law, the Most High God told us we, we don't supposed to be hating Edomites, you know, white folks, because they are our brothers. And Egyptians, we live in their land. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they were commanded to not hate an Edomite because they are our brothers, not have hatred towards an Egyptian because we lived in their lands. Every Egyptian wasn't bad, just like today in, 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 in America. Every white person ain't bad. We don't supposed to go around hating white people because they, they white. Every white person is not bad. There are some really, really good white people that, that would treat you fairly, that would treat, treat you righteous. I'm not going to say all of them. I'm, I'm not going to put that label over all white folk because we know damn well that's not the case. This is gonna be, I'm just keeping it 100. You, go, you can't, like I said, the same thing you can say about uh, your own black, uh, black folks, your own brothers. You know, the only way to, stay, uh, uh, to love a rattlesnake is to stay away from it. Put it in the put barriers around it and stay away from it, because you know it's gonna bite you. You got brothers like that. Now we ain't we ain't talking about all brothers, but some brothers are just 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 dare to do evil. Amos one and eleven. Now there's an exception. Thus said the Lord for three transgressions of Edom. 
and for four. He said for three of Edom. He, he told us at first not to hate an Edomite. But then in Amos, he said for three transgressions of Edom and for four. So it's, what he actually saying is there's four things that the Edomite done for three transgressions. For three transgressions. Let's see what they are. Amos 1 and 11. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Edom and for four, he counted a fourth one. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. I'm not going to turn away the punishment of the Edomites for these four transgressions. What were they? Because he did pursue his brother with the sword. Okay, he chasing the, the Israelites all over the land with the sword, chasing them, putting them in slavery. And did cast off all pity. Have no pity for us. Child, old people, all die. And his anger did tear perpetually. He perpetually hates us. And he kept his wrath forever. And he still hate us. They're creating laws right now because of their hatred towards us. So, the Most High God said for three transgressions are for four. Now, when we came out of out of Egypt, he told us not to hate them. But as time went on, all the things that the Edomites have done to, to the Most High God's people, they're going to get punished. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I ain't, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to have to touch them. Most High God said for three transgressions or for four, I'm not going to turn away my punishment from them. The Most High commanded the Israelites not to hate the Edomites when they came out of Egypt, but since then, they have pursued the Israelites with the sword, have no pity or mercy, and he has continual hatred for the Israelites. Deuteronomy 23 and 8. The children that are begotten of them, of, of the Edomites and the Egyptians, of heathens, that we ain't talking about the the children that are begot, beg, we mean begotten, mean the man beget, begot, shem. You know, the children, the mother don't beget, the, the father beget, begot. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in the third generation. So son, grandson, great-grandson. So the children at that time could enter into the the the, the Congregation in the third generation at the grandson, <coughs> provided that they don't mate and have children with another nation. Now, if they, if the son was to have uh, children by an Israelite woman or something like that, the grandkids can go in the congregation, come in the congregation. <coughs> Come, they can come in the congregation. We ain't talking about because the fact is, if if you are the son of a white man or a Egyptian or 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 Arab or something like that, that's not that's not seed of Israel. They they have a congregation themselves, but you're not wanted in their congregation. Most of you not, unless you get rich, unless you turn into Tiger Woods, then you probably welcome because you provide them with resources and wealth. The children begotten of Edomite women by Israelite men. <clears throat> Cannot come into the congregation until the great grandchild, provided they remain married among their people. However, a child begotten of the Edomite man can never come into the congregation because he is a terror and is not Israel. Like Christ, these are the, these are the children that Christ said, "Now let them grow together." Then the reapers come, the angels when they come, they're gonna bind them all together and burn them. They're going to gather all the tares up out of among the Israelites, gather them together, and burn them. 
That's not my words. That's the word according to um, Matthew 13 and I don't know, 30 some of 30 some of 40. The most high would cleanse our blood. All the impurities of breeding outside of Israel with women of the other nation will require the Israelites' blood to be cleansed. The Most High will purify His chosen, not all of Israel, but most, because most of most will not make it to this point. Most of us ain't gonna make it. But by, by this time, most of us gonna be all dead and go. Two thirds of us are already gonna be dead when this happens. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Two thirds of the Israelites will have met their demise and will be partaken and will have met their demise and will not be partaken in the kingdom to come. Let me put that not. They they not gonna be they not gonna be partaking in, in, in the uh in the kingdom. They are presently serving the God of the earth, of this earth, and they have lost their rights to the tree of life. Only one third of the Israelites will remain upon the earth, and what will become of them? Zechariah 13 and 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. He gonna put us through the fire. He gonna purify our blood. He gonna try. He, he gonna purify us. Bringing the one third through the fire means that the Israelites' blood would be purified. Cleansing of their blood. All Israelites will require their blood to be cleansed. Joel 3 and 20. It's, here it says it in another play in Joel 3 and 20. But Judah shall dwell forever in, a, in Jerusalem from generation to generation. This is a future condition of the righteous, real Jews who keep the laws and commandments. Joel 3 21. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. All of us have some impurities. We are all mixed with something. Africans, Arabs, whites, Asians, East Indians, etc. The Israelites have played the harlot from generation to generation. The blood of the Israelites will be purified because Christ will be in Zion. I perceive that those who keep the commandments of the Most High and have rights to the tree of life, their blood will be purified at this, at this time. That is one of the properties of the tree of life, to cleanse the blood for everlasting life. This is significant, revealing to the Israelites when the blood cleansing will occur. The blood cleansing will happen when Christ returns and will dwell in Zion. Now you got to have right to the tree of life. Now, cause I, I can't perceive bad blood being able to go forth even if you've given everlasting life unless your blood is purified. So when you have rights to the tree of life, your blood is going to have to be purified in order to be able to, to, to last forever. Because right now, we, you know, our blood can't last forever. Makes sense to me. Revelations 21, 22. And I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb of the temple of it. Christ would dwell in Zion and the Most High God would provide the light to the world without the sun as he did in the beginning. I will always believe that Genesis has occurred many times. However, this is 
something that I cannot prove, just my thoughts. The Most High God has created the earth, mankind, animals, and everything in it. Gave men rules to abide by and saw each time how long that it took mankind to turn wicked. Before he destroyed the earth again, the Bible is given details of how the world was created in Genesis. He gave details of how it was created and how it would be redesigned in Revelations. Because if you are actually reading this Bible for knowledge and understanding, the Most High God tells you that how he created the earth in the beginning. Now, give the give you a uh, Christ, it'll give you details how the world is going to be destroyed. Revelations to show you how it's going to be destroyed. And if the Most High God, when the Most High God have mercy on Jacob and choose Israel again, and he say set them in their own land, what, what, what land are you going to set them in that hasn't been destroyed? It's going to be another beginning. Another beginning when he creates the heavens and the earth because the moon is, going, is not going to give light. The sun is not going to give light. The Most High God is going to give light through his glory. Just like when he created the first day and he, and he called the, the, the light day and the, and the darkness night. There was no sun or moon. There's a lot of people that, that stumble over, over simple things like that. His glory sh uh, provided light. Just like his glory going to provide light at, 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 at the end. It's not going to be no sun and no moon. It's going to be endless light in, 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 the, uh, in the gates, in the temple, in the kingdom. That's going to be, you know, so that means that our blood is going to be purified. And the fact is we're not going to need to sleep. Because it's going to be sunlight all the time. You're not going to be like, you know what, I need to go take a nap. You're going to be doing it like a, like a, a, a robot. Just you could, you could stay up all day long and never get tired. No need to sleep. You sleep while you're flying across the ocean. Okay, let's continue on with uh, Revelation, Matthew. The enemy that sold them, now we, we, we're getting back with the terrorists. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. The enemy that had sex with our women, either through rape or through that R word, or our women foolishly volunteering of the devil who has control of the earth and everyone conforms for fear of loss of jobs or ability to make a living. They have the power to, to justify everything evil that is against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. During the end of the world, the angels will gather all of the tares. As you have noticed, it is not the job of the Israelites to tell some Israelites, if they are of the the kingdom of, or not, that is not part of the law. The angels have that ability to look upon the children of Israel and determine who are the tares and who are the wheat. Because the reapers, when they come, the angels are the reapers. They're the ones going to be able to go and bundle and gather all the tares among us and bundle them and burn them. They're going to know by looking at them. Israelites, it is not your job to tell somebody what they are and what they're not. 
Most like God didn't give you that job. You out of line. You out of place. You 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 think you 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 think you have more authority than you should. You play you play your role. Don't don't overextend yourself. This is not your job. And like I'm saying, the fact is, a lot of you get a lot of you guys running around. Oh, those not our people. You don't know. You don't even know your own history. I bet you can't. I bet you can't go back. Ten generations with your own family. And proof. Not with somebody tell you through some DNA test. Or, oh, oh, you come from the uh, underground of the Somalia. No, you don't know. You don't know where you came from. So stop trying to tell other people who they are and who they are not. The spirit will tell them whether they, they are Israel or whether they are not. Because if the word vibes with them, nine times out of ten, they're Israelites. You don't know your kin folks, they probably don't know theirs either. And a lot of y'all just plain heathens. Matthew 13, 40, as it, therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. Most of God is not going to allow anybody that is not born of Israel in the kingdom. Now, you can get through, you know, some, some, of, some of the nations get, can get through by keeping the commandments and, and, and serving the Most High God and loving Him and doing the things that Most High God require of us. And He said He'll make them glad in the kingdom because Most High God loves those who love Him. But you're not going to be able to put seeds in our women and then, you know, try to sneak them in the kingdom. No, they're they not going to get in that way. None of the seeds of the devil are going to get in. There is no room for terrors. Children sired by men outside of the nation of Israel. In the kingdom of heaven, they were not supposed to be born. So says the law. If the Most High God loves the whole world, then why is he not acceptable of terrors? Because fact is, if you love the whole world, it's all oh, they're good, they're cool. No. If, if he loves the whole world, even Christ put this parable, placed this parable together. Christ is not acceptable of tares. If he if he's saying God so loved the world, just he would he, he would not be so hard against tares. Deuteronomy 73, neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thy take unto thy son. Do you think violating the Most High God's laws are acceptable to him and will allow disobedient children to enter into his kingdom that he established only for the obedient Israelites? There are few examples in the Bible that speaks against marrying other nations. Matthew thirteen forty one, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of the kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. Christ is now focusing on the other people who are not tares. The angel will gather those who offend which are the other nations and those who do iniquity are those under the covenants. This represents the entire world. Because those who offend are not under the covenant. But they have done a lot of things against Israel, against the Most High God, hated, hating on the Most High God by doing things toward his people. They offended him. And the ones that are doing iniquity, 
uh, his children that are running up the God of this world. He gonna, the angel going to gather all of them up. And those, those are going to be the goats, the ones that he's going to gather them up. And, and they're going to be the goats. They're going to be on the, on the left-hand side. Matthew 13, 42, and shall cast them, those who offend and those who do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is trash day. All the trash, bad acting, unruly behavior, unlawful people will be tossed into hell fire. John 14, 8, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. All the miracles that the Most High God had performed in the presence of the Israelites over the past generation, from Abraham until then, Philip was attempting to make a request like our forefather wanting to see proof or a miracle from the Most High God. The disciples were witnesses to many miracles that Christ performed. John 14, 9, Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father? Why are you saying show us the Father? You've been around me this long, and, and, and you you still talking about let, let me see the Father? Show us the Father? Christ was the Lord that Abraham saw in Genesis 18 and 1. The Lord that came down as a cloud standing in the door of the tabernacle, Numbers 12 and 5. The Most High God had told Moses that no man can see him and live, Exodus 33 and 20. Christ looks just like his father. Did the will of the Most and did the will of the Most High God. He looked, he looked just like his father and he did his will. He did everything his father told him to do. So, when somebody tell their son, you just like your father. You know, that, that could mean that he looked like him. He got his ways. He act like him. You know, he do the things that his father does. You just like your daddy. Where you think that come from? Christ can't be like his father. That's, that's, that's a problem. Hebrew 10 and 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Christ came in the will of the book, in the volume of the book, throughout, from Genesis all the way to uh, Revelations. When when he when 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 the Most High God said, "Let us make man in our image," that was Christ right there next to him, him and the angels. You think the Most High God did all the work in Christ and, and the angels that stood by and and, and and looked and watched. The Most High God said, "Let it let it be done," and thus it was so. You must believe this statement in order to understand that the Most High God and His Son Christ has been referenced the same way using Lord. Very few people did not think to identify which is being referenced. The Most High God gave the saints a way to identify which God is being referenced. Numbers 12 and 6. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. So, 
that God, the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob telling you, if I'm if 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 there be a prophet among you, I'm gonna make myself known to that person, that prophet, in visions and dreams. Now, you can you have a lot of these people running around talking about, well, God told me this and God told me that. Most like God ain't gonna go tell, tell you go ask for money, ask people for money. God told me that 20 of y'all got two hundred dollars. Give it to me. Most like God is not gonna ever tell you things, tell people things like that. For for your own benefit. For the benefit of your pockets. So if if anybody that you are standing before Talking about the Most High God told them. No, there are visions and dreams of things to come that has not happened. If the Most High God is behind it, there are things in the future that is uncontrollable by, you know, uncontrollable by anybody. But they saw it coming and they told the people. And he said it, it was of God, of the Most High God. He said this is going to happen and it happened. Not that he got uh, some political uh, view before before it happened. That you know somebody in politics or the government. Yeah, we're gonna do this next week. No, you know, like I'm saying, it's gonna be some like a flood, like Noah in the flood. The Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob told Aaron, Miriam, and Moses that he make himself known to his prophets through visions and dreams. So anytime the scripture says that they saw the Lord outside of vision or dream, it is referencing to Christ. Because if any man saw the Most High God in the flesh, they would die. His power is too great. John 14, 10, believe thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwell in me. He doeth the works. We have to learn to see the Most High God in a righteous man instead of seeing evil and criticism. That is a Righteous man of the Most High God does not speak of himself, but speak of the Father, hearkening, observing, and doing all the commandments and statutes. Christ came on behalf of the Most High God. He came teaching the laws of the Father. He didn't come begging. He didn't come saying, God told me y'all going to have to give me all this money and, and you know, y'all, you people that got gold and diamonds, give, give me gold and diamonds and, you know, if you got lean, uh, uh, you know, give me some lean. I, I heard a guy on, on, on Facebook with that message. A, 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 he's called himself a pastor. And I and I said, I, and I and I was praying, Lord, please don't let nobody answer to this man. Give him anything. Because that's all he was doing. He, he did not give them a reason, a purpose for it. He, just, he, he didn't give them a reason at all why he was asking for these things. But he was saying, you know, to give it to the church. The church is nothing but his pockets. You know, you know, give me gold and diamonds and, you know, uh, you know, you got to use gold and, you know, you got land and, you know, got homes and stuff. You know, you know, just donate it to me and give it to the church. Then ask for, then ask, then say, you know, I'm trying to develop a this and make a development of that. You know, he, 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 he's not willing, none of these pastors are willing to do a contract with their con a congregation. Saying, you know, for the money that you guys give me, I, I promise to do this, this, and this to build up the church, to create a new businesses and stuff like that. Not in my name, but in the name of the church. And we'll dedicate, we'll, uh, we'll nominate people. Not me. I'm not going to be involved in the nomination process. I'm, I'm, nobody that that's under my control going to be involved in that. We're going to nominate some people to run it in a business fashion and we go use the proceeds the profits to to uh to do this and that and that 
for the church, uh, not for the church, but for the people. Because the fact is, the church is supposed to feed the flock, not the, not the pastor. The, the pastor is not part of the flock. He's supposed to be the shepherd. You don't, the, the shepherd never, you know, the sheep don't feed the shepherd. The shepherd feeds the sheep. Y'all, y'all get it right. Don't, you know, don't, don't let the, the pastor who's, who, who's supposed to be the shepherd come and be requesting to be fed. Y'all got to pay all this for him and all that stuff. He sound like a whore. He sound like these, these people, these, these young women on, on the internet right now. If a, if a man want to talk to me, he got to pay all my bills. That, that, that's where they got it from, these pastors. If y'all want to be want me to be y'all preacher, y'all got to pay all my bills and and give me all of this and all that. I may I got to ride nothing, nothing nothing lower than a Bentley. Wow. My people are foolish. So said Jeremiah 4.22. They have not known me. They are sottish children. Wise to do evil. And to do good. They have no knowledge. Thus said the Most High God. Foolish people. They don't want to do good right. You, you still have these pastors with the audacity to be on the internet begging for people's gold like it was nothing. He was on the internet begging like it was nothing. Just give me your gold and your silver and, you know, give me your land that you don't want, that y'all ain't using, just give it to the church. Give me all the houses that y'all, you know, all the houses that, 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 that you know, you guys got. He just begging like for everything. I want all your stuff. Give me all your inheritance. Give it to me. Don't give a damn about your inheritance, about your children's children and your children. Just give me your gold and your diamonds. This man had the audacity to say that. <coughs> And he gonna catch some gullible, crazy ass people, and they gonna do it. They gonna give him all that, all, all that he asked for. Anyway, hope you guys got somebody. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If you want to support my ministry? Go on to Amazon.com. You can purchase any of my eighteen books. Uh, they're available. Most are available in ebook. Audio book, paperback, and hard copy. So, if you want to support my ministry, that's how you can support it. I'm not going to ever ask you to send me any money. I'm not going to put no cash app on my uh, page <coughs> or no PayPal buttons or anything like that. You know, I am a writer by, by trade. I write. So, if you want to purchase my book, you can always support me that way. And I appreciate that in advance. Um... Like I say, this is a teaching ministry. As the Holy Spirit gives, I give back to, to the people. You don't have to. You don't have to buy any of my books to get this knowledge. You can go on the, at Live Shepherd Class, scroll down, uh, and there are playlists on my page pertaining to any of these books that I have written. You can watch the videos. Uh, be a number of videos. You can watch. You know. You can watch the videos, and uh, you get to, you get the understanding just the same. But if you want to have an audio book to take with you to, while you're on the way, driving to work or, or while you're in your car or while you're, on, while you're sitting, sitting in the bed or while you're doing whatever you're doing, you can listen to an audio book. You, you know, it'll take a few hours to get through. Or it'll take, uh, take a few hours, about 10, 10, 15, some 20 hours to get through, but... <coughs> It's not audio book. You you know audio book. When you're when you're on your way to work, you can pop it in. It ain't much news going on, but but all this bad stuff every time you listen. So you throw an audio book in and to learn more about the Most High in Christ. 
and what they com- what they requires what they require of you. <coughs> anyway, with that family and friends, I like to say shalom.